Sono stato sbazzato nel tempo, fra il passato, il presente e il futuro. And I'd like to ask you a couple of questions about the production design of Loki season 2. The first mm. one is uh, if you worked uh, for changing, uh, evolving the design of TVA, if you do, how it change in this season? Sure. Um, <clears throat> you know, it, it, this season had a, a great narrative opportunity to see more places of the TVA that we had not seen before. So I'd say it's less so about changing it and more so about seeing new places within it that do look different for for very important story reasons you know the the way i would characterize it is that we're seeing the temporal core we're seeing the rna we're seeing uh these huge um fortified corridors that connect these spaces and i think that we're we're in this new level that i call the systems level which is imagine the kind of foundation of the tva or the infrastructure of the tva that was probably built first in order to harness the power of the loom and to create the kind of foundation required to build the more finished spaces of the TVA that we saw in season one. So for this reason, you know, the, the sets that we, um, that we created this season have, a, have an even older quality. So like if, if season one was inspired by the mid sixties, I think these sets are heavily informed by the mid fifties and a more kind of cold war, era fortified um kind of bunker like uh feeling to these spaces and uh, there is also the obi workspace that is yes. a new place we visit often can you tell me something about the inspiration and the the, the idea behind this space sure yeah so the research and advancement i is is uh is where ob works And I would like to say, first of all, this is a, it's a practical set. We built this set. That's not a CG ceiling you see there. Um, and yeah, the idea is that this is, this is the hub of the innovate of the technological innovation, as well as the maintenance of the TVA where, where OB is. And so it's a giant workshop. Like you look at the workshops of i, I don't know anybody from a master carpenter to a master cobbler to an engineer, and they collect materials over the years and they, it's, it's semi-organized, but then over time it gets more and more cluttered. Um, and it's, we wanted to take this idea of a crazy kind of wizard, a brilliant minds workshop, but make, make the, the wildest version of it possible. Um, and then the other important thing is this visually kind of defining thing is this massive funnel of tubes from all over the TVA that bring the repair requests to OB. So th that was the kind of narrative needs of it. And for, for me, the main kind of goal of it, uh, of what I try to do in every set is to create a very strong graphic composition. And so Basically, what you see in OB's set when you're standing there at the door and looking in is you see a giant circle and the circle of the back wall made by these arced shelves with a giant triangle within it, which is the cone pointing down at OB um, to make a strong and quick um, read of, of the space and the most important part of the space, which is OB played beautifully by Key. Okay, one last question about your direction of the episode three, how it was. Yes. How it was to be behind the camera oh. and direct. That was fantastic. It was a privilege and so much fun. We had, uh, and it was also so lucky that it worked out that it was the World's Fair um, episode, which had uh, a lot of beautiful fun work for me to do as a production designer. Um, but it was really so fun to have the opportunity to production design uh, for myself in that case, uh, knowing what, how I wanted to shoot it. And now I'm the crew that we have and the team, the creative team that we're working with and the unbelievable cast of brilliant, brilliant um, performers led by Tom is just a joy to, to, um, to direct this episode.
Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Va bene. Di nuovo.